But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you guys are ready to start your day off in God's Word. We are in Judges chapter 9. We come to a very hectic chapter. It's a pretty long chapter, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So we know in the last chapter, Gideon, he passes off the scene. He has the victory over the Midianites. And then uh, he does that, which is not right in the sight of God. He uh, makes his own idol. Uh, he has many uh, sons with multiple wives. And so we come to this chapter. And we find out one of those sons, which was actually one of his uh, maids, not one of his concubines or one of his wives, but actually uh, one of his sons, Abimelech, decides to take it upon himself to say, you know what, I want to be the king of Israel. The, the, the same thing that was offered to Gideon that he refused, rightly so, he said, no, let God rule over you. He's saying, you know what, I want to take that for myself. So he, uh, you know, he concocts this scheme somewhat, and he tells the children of Shechem, all right, a large group of people of which he was a part of. He tells me, hey, do you guys want these 70 sons? Because that's how many sons that uh, uh, Gideon had. Do you want these seven sons of Jerubal? Yeah, if I'm even saying that right, but that's uh, the other name Gideon goes by. He says, do you want these 70 sons to rule over you? Or do you want one of your own brothers to rule over you? So he concocts this scheme with his brothers in Shechem, and they all build an army, and they go down. Uh, to where Gideon's family was, and they, they annihilate, they kill all of the sons of Gideon, save for Jotham. Jotham, one of the younger sons, he hides himself, all right, to escape death, and all his brothers are killed. And, and, and on a side note, just how quickly uh, the children of Israel forget all that Gideon did for them. You know, this is this man that saved them from slavery to the Midians, to the Midianites, and now after his death, not even long after his death, they very quickly are like, you know what, forget his family. Let's make Abimelech our king instead, since Gideon didn't even want to be it. And so Jotham, he escapes, he hides, but then he makes himself known and he, and he gives forth a, uh, a parable. But it's also somewhat of a prophecy as well to say what's going to happen to Abimelech and the children of Shechem, those guys that align themselves with them and allowed Abimelech to then rule over Israel, which only lasted for three years. And he gives this parable, and he talks about uh, different trees, great, uh, beautiful, mighty trees uh, in the countryside. He likens, I believe, Gideon unto um, an olive tree. And it says, like, people were, went to the olive tree and said, ask the olive tree to rule over them. He's like, no, I will not be elevated above the other trees. They go to a, a fig tree. He says, no, I don't want to be elevated above the other trees. And, and it just goes so forth. And he says, and then they settled because they couldn't get any of these trees to do it, they settled on a bramble bush. The poorest excuse of what could be considered a tree or a shrub, whatever you want to call it, they settle on this, and he likens that unto Abimelech. He's like, the guy's, he's saying, hey guys, the guy you settled to be your king, he's weak. His shadow is not long. It's not going to be a good rule, and you guys are going to be consumed with fire, both the bramble bush, Abimelech, and the children of Shechem as well. Says his piece, and then he pieces out of there. And then as time goes on, God, after about three years of rule, he allows a, um, I don't know if I would say an evil spirit, maybe a jealous spirit, a, uh, a manipulating spirit to come upon the children of Shechem and Abimelech to where now the children of Shechem distrust Abimelech. And they want to find a way to, you know, get rid of him saying, you know, why would we have the son? They don't longer see him as a brother of Shechem. Now they're, they're talking to him as a son of Gideon. Why would we have the son of Gideon rule over us? Why don't we have a you know someone else instead? And through a series of events, battles between the children of Shechem and the army that Abimelech is able to raise up himself, uh, and the chapter is long, but in essence, they both end up uh, annihilating each other. Abimelech annihilates uh, the children of Shechem, burns down their strongholds, the fire, and then Abimelech, in a different battle, he himself is killed as well. So it's just the ultimate hen of the manipulation of Abimelech and the children of Shechem. And if there's one main thing I guess I can get out of this chapter is that Gideon, even though he didn't end off on the right step, he he said the right thing when he was asked to be king. He said, no, let the Lord rule over you. But when these guys were following their own selfishness and wanted to be king themselves, this only led to more uh, defeat and more failure on the part of the Israelites in the future instead of allowing God to rule over them, doing that which is right in the eyes of God, 
But when they wanted to be the kings themselves, they did that which was right in their own eyes, and that led to sin and idolatry and ultimately the end and defeat of Abimelech and the children of Shechem in that time as well. That's all I got for today's chapter, guys. I hope you have a great day. Tell somebody about your great God. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless.